Thanks a lot for slicing and dicing the, the economy. So, uh, Stas, uh, could you comment from the fixed income point of view? Uh, what do you think about this, uh, I would say, conundrum? Well, uh, perhaps I can add a couple more uh, statistics to that as well. If you look at the U.S. investment grade uh, option adjusted spread, it was in the low 80s last week, I think. Last time that happened was uh, 2005. If you look at the volume of debt being traded, uh, probably a third to a quarter of that is triple B rated, somehow all in one uh, rating. Um, if you look at the amount of corporate debt outstanding in the United States during global financial crisis, we were at about five trillion. We are at uh, over 10 trillion now. And yes, there was inflation in between, but uh, inflation explains only half of that. So we, uh, if we look at the debt in general, if we look at the sovereign debt, uh, personal debt, corporate debt, we are more in, uh, indebted as a modern civilization as we have ever been, which uh, may, be a, um, may be a byproduct of growth. And you know, we borrow and invest and uh, it helps economy grow, but it also introduces a system fragility. And uh, I, I do worry that the current level of uh, uh, credit spreads is not pricing the risk. So, at SAS Institute, we have uh, credit risk models for uh, corporate issuers, and we cover uh, uh, 42,000 companies globally. And if I look at just the US market, uh, within the investment grade space, we are probably about 50th percentile in terms of the uh, outlook for uh, corporate credit risk likelihood of default. If you go out to two to three years, we are in like 60th and 70th percentile, meaning 100th percentile would be the, the worst uh, outcome. So. Uh, based on what we're seeing from our internal models, uh, we are not in a uh, uh, no landing, uh, you know, uh, optimistic market. And uh, in general, what we see is uh, those statistics, they're, no, they're, they're uh, you know, attention grabbing in the headlines, but there's also detail behind those statistics that often gets lost, is that what we call a great bifurcation. We've seen a lot of divergence between winners and losers following, uh, following the COVID uh, uh, crisis. And that starts with macro outlook. I mean, if you look at uh, United States versus G7, and in fact, the latest IMF forecast up the GDP outlook for US, and uh, there were some negative revisions on the European side. If we look at the industries, uh, if we look at what's happening in the, for example, in the US with Magnificent Seven with Nvidia, uh, versus the, the rest of the companies. And even within the industries, if you dig down to something like consumer staples, so within consumer staples, you have a whole slew of companies that are getting uh, decimated. We, we look at the EV, we look at the educational technology, we look at uh, uh, weight loss, which has been uh, hit really hard by the GLP-1 revolution. So you really now have to dig further down into the industry to see what's going on because these headline numbers uh, are not necessarily reflective of the full story. And uh, uh, there's not really a signs of this bifurcation uh, uh, mean reverting anytime soon, which, uh, which is troubling. I think it uh, further, adds to, mm -hmm. uh, further adds to the system fragility. And just one point to note, uh, Vidak, you mentioned the credit card interest. Credit card interest is not included in CPI calculations either. So, uh, so, so you would agree that the Fed didn't get it right with 50 basis points? Uh, uh, opinions of my own and don't represent uh, the view of the company, but yes, uh, I think the 50 basis points was a, was a mistake, absolutely. So wh where are we going now? I mean, 10-year uh, went from 365 to 425. We're, we're back to at the beginning. Yeah, it wouldn't be long duration at this point. I think there are a lot of structural issues that are uh, uh, that have not been present before. So we have the uh, reversal of globalization, which is inflationary. You have climate and green energy transition, which is also inherently uh, inflationary. Uh, uh, you have, uh, you know, consumers uh, struggling on the uh, kind of on the uh, working class uh, side of the spectrum, and we, we see that with the wealth creation numbers too. Again, once you start uh, diving yeah. deeper in those numbers, there's some troubling signs.